I believe that art is the only form of activity in which man shows himself to be a true individual. Marcel Duchamp, he's the guy that put a urinal in an art gallery, caused a whole lot of outrage, and changed the course of art history. But that's just the famous bit. There's actually heaps more to this extraordinary artist. Fundamentally, Duchamp was interested in changing your idea of the definition of the work of art. Duchamp's whole life was an inspiring riot of artistic reinvention, a series of radical moves that left the art world struggling to keep up. Duchamp never wanted to repeat himself, he never wanted to settle into a consistent taste, because he believed that that was the death knell of true creativity. Duchamp started early. By age 15, he was already a pretty good impressionist painter. By his 20s, he was associated with one of the most avant-garde movements of the time, the Cubists in Paris. But his paintings were too challenging even for them, particularly this one, his first provocative masterpiece, Nude Descending a Staircase. So Nude Descending a Staircase number two, a painting of 1912, really is historically a kind of game changer. It attacked the sacrosanct subject of the nude of art and really revised it in ways that predict lots and lots of Duchamp's interests in his work to come afterwards. The one the newspaper man called an explosion and a shingle fact. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that was a really, a great, uh, a great line he put, put out there. Succès de scandale, yeah. now. Succès de scandale, yes. That was the one that caught the public's attention and made Duchamp famous in New York before he ever stepped foot there. So it became a kind of icon of the kind of art that Duchamp is remembered for, which is the kind of art that really challenges you to rethink everything. So with that massive early success, he was on track to becoming a renowned painter, right? Not the case. He decided that if he was going to simply keep working as a painter, he would get into a rut almost immediately and betray his own ideas about originality and experimentation, so he simply gave up painting and decided that he would pursue art under completely different terms. So Duchamp went underground for a bit. He stepped away from art circles, got a job as a librarian, studied maths and physics, and then came back with his signature radical work. His most recognizable innovation was the invention of the works he called ready-made, that is, ordinary mass-produced objects that Duchamp selected and did not make himself, and which he placed in art context in order to create new thoughts for them, as he said. The ready-mades were important because they really challenged the whole idea of originality and authorship and technical ability as essential parts of the artistic process. And the question then was, well, if those essential elements of art have been pushed aside, what is art? So what does a groundbreaking, pivotal artist do next? He heads to Buenos Aires and plays a lot of chess. He saw many connections between chess and art. Chess, for him, was essentially a highly cerebral kind of exercise, something involving the gray matter. And he thought that uh, art should be oriented toward teasing the mind more than gratifying the eye. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, he plays competitive chess and spirals into this focus on cerebral intellectual art, doing experiments with language and optics. But being Duchamp, he finds a way to make it complicated. He's making all sorts of new experiments under the partial cover of a female alter ego or pseudonym of Eros Selavi. He invented this persona to distance himself as a maker from his own work. And that was another way of challenging common sense ways of working as an artist and finding new ways of working. By this point, I kind of see Duchamp as like this slippery fish that won't allow the art world to contain or categorize him and he keeps this up until the very end. Duchamp publicly retires, but of course he has a secret room where for 20 years he develops ideas and does drawings for his final enigmatic masterpiece, which in true Duchamp fashion isn't revealed until after his death. To say that Duchamp is one of the very most important artists in modern art in the West in the 20th century is an entirely uncontroversial claim these days. What makes him so attractive to artists who come later is really his iconoclasm, his willingness to disobey and disrespect the rules that have been inherited from the history of art. 
He said it more than once. The public he had in mind was not even the public of his own day, but really the public of 50 years later that would look at his body of work as a whole and think about it in its own way. And I think it's very nice that we are 50 years after the end of Duchamp's career, and that makes us his ideal public. Thank you.